Hi, welcome to this demo of IBM Spectrum Protect. I'll be showing you the new LZ4 client side compression that's available in our backup archive client. Now back in version 715, we introduced LZ4 server side compression for our container storage pools. And if you were doing client side dedupe, you would also be able to use the client side compression and we would use LZ4 for that specific use case. So data going to a container storage pool. However, any other data was previously using LZW compression. So in this release, 8.1.12, we're now utilizing LZ4 client side compression for all types of storage pools and workloads. The only exception is LZW client side will be used if you have client side deduped going to a out of band deduplication traditional storage pool. Now LZ4 compression has the advantage of better compression rates, faster compression, and less CPU usage. And depending upon the workload, we see all of these at 10% plus enhancements. And as you'll see in our demo, this is of course very dependent upon the type of files you are compressing. LZ4 client-side compression is now replacing LZW for all types of workloads, whether it's your backup, whether it's archive, whether it's an incremental or selective backup, whether it's utilizing our APIs or HSM clients. And this is going to be regardless to the type of storage pool we're writing to, whether it's disk, tape, or as we previously supported container storage pools. When you restore this compressed data, if it was backed up with 8.1.12, you will need to use an 8.1.12 or above Spectrum Protect backup archive client. And that's kind of a normal statement for when you're doing restores. Of course, our 8.1.12 and above clients are still able to restore files that were backed up with the LZW compression. So we are backward compatible. In order to turn on client-side compression on your Solaris, Unix, Linux platforms, you'll want to go into dsm.sys and on Windows, your dsm.opt file and set the option compression, yes. By default, it is set to compression, no. Some additional options you have is this compress always and that's set in dsm.opt file and by default, it is set to yes. And what this does is if the file grows during compression, we will still send it as a compressed object, even though it might be larger, if you have compress always equals yes. You can also set specific files to be included or excluded from compression by going into your include exclude file and either using the include.compression followed by a specific file name or a file pattern. And if you want to exclude them, you'd use the exclude.compression. Okay, with that, let's go ahead and get started with the demo. We're going to be using both an 8.1.12 and an 8.1.11 client, and we'll be backing up the same workload. So that'll be a text file, then a JPEG file, then an MP4 file, and finally a file that's been tarred. And we'll look at the different compression ratios and how the options impact each of these types of files. On this 8111 Spectrum Protect backup client, if we look at the dsm.sys file, you will see that we have compression yes set for this specific machine. If we look in the dsm.opt file, you'll see we've taken the default, which would be compress always yes. So let's start by going to the 8111 client, and we're going to go ahead and issue a backup against this text file. You'll see in the backup results that this file was compressed by 75%. So we just sent about a quarter of the amount of data across. If you issue a query backup, the backup name dash detail, this will give you additional information, including the compression algorithm, which in our case was the LZW. It'll also show you that we did not do any type of client-side encryption, nor did we do client-side deduplication. Now let's issue that same 
backup command, but on the 8112 backup archive client, which has the same files as the 8111 client on it. You'll see this time the data was compressed by 86%. That's in comparison to the 75% on the LZW. And if we do the query with the details on this backup, you'll see we're using compression type LZ4. And once again, we are not encrypting and we are not deduping. By default, we will use LZ4 with version 8.1.12 and above. It is not possible to specify LZW with the 8.1.12 client. However, if you are restoring previously backed up files which were compressed with LZW at a lower client version, that'll be no problem. We are backward compatible. Also, it doesn't matter which version of Spectrum Protect Plus server you're backing up to. Okay, let's go ahead and try backing up a different file. This time we're going to back up a JPEG file. So if we go over to 8.1.11 and issue a backup against this, you'll see that this JPEG file actually grows when it's compressed. The object compressed by shows up as negative 34%. This used LZW compression and it will be sent because the default is compress always equals yes, meaning it will send it regardless if it grows or not. If we take the same command and switch over to version 8.1.12 and issue it there, You'll see the LZ4 compression ran and the file just grew by an itty bitty amount. So we went ahead and once again sent it compressed because the compress always was set to the default of yes. If we look at the details for this backup, you will see that the LZ4 compression was utilized. If we switch back to the 8.1.11 machine and we edit the dsm.opt file, and this time we insert the compress always no and we go ahead and save that file now if we rerun that backup of that same jpeg file you'll see that this time we get a objects compressed zero percent and we see a message that the compressed data grew so we did not send the file as a compressed file we sent it in its full format because the compress always was set to no. Okay, let's go ahead and comment out that compress always no, so it goes back to the default of compress always yes. Okay, let's go ahead and back up an MP4 file with the 8.1.11 LZW. You'll see that that file grows by 24%. If we issued the same backup command on the 8.1.12, you'll see that the LZ4 compression actually compresses the object by 9%. So that's almost a 30% better than our LZW compression. Okay, finally, let's go back to 8111 and back up a tar file using LZW. Remember this file would have had compression run against it as part of the tar process. And so when we back it up with the LZW on 8.1.11, you can see that it grows by 32%. So we get compressed by negative 32% showing up. If we switch over to 8.1.12 and issue that same command against that tar file, this time you're going to see that we are able to use LZ4 compression and compress it by 1%. So once again, a increase in our compression ratio over the older LZW. So in summary, I've showed you how Spectrum Protect Backup Archive Client version 8.1.12 now uses the LZ4 compression as its default compression algorithm for all types of data going to all different types of storage pools on the Spectrum Protect Plus server. LZ4 brings with it an improvement in compression ratios, utilizes less CPU, and is a faster compression than LZW. Thank you very much.